so it will be difficult for her. Yeah, I'm not sure how much uh, the leading players will be taking in these views. There's a lot been going on. We'll update you on that in just a moment. First, to remind you how things look on the Race to Costa del Sol rankings. This event, 23 of 30 on the calendar. Three of the top four were here in Switzerland this week. All three of them could have moved to the top of the rankings with a win. Anna Palai Trevino missed the cut by just a single shot. But Dick Shadaga and the Tour's most recent winner, Trishat Chinglab, who are third and fourth on those standings, both started the final round inside the top 15, albeit six and seven shots back, respectively. So, I teased you, we got a, a little bit of early play to bring you, a few changes on the leaderboard, and we'll start with Annelise Cordell, who started Sophie seven back at the start of this final round. And the 39-year-old needed to make some birdies early on. She parred the first, birdied the second hole. Yeah, she added birdies at six and seven, out in 32. Still a, a fair way back. And then on to the back nine. One of the toughest holes on the golf course, this 10th hole. It was a par five, it's now a par four. Back left flag. And this is how you start the back nine, isn't it? Needs a charge, and he's getting one. It's 11 years over since her last win. This to get to nine under par, which as it stands, is only a couple back from the French woman. So what about the overnight leader? Well, not the start she wanted. Made a bogey on four, missed this par put on five. We mentioned she was bogey free before today. So two bogeys already for her, two over through five holes. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? You go 39 holes without a drop shot, and then three come along at once. This was at six. And he can understand the nerves. Of course you can. She has never been in this position. But this is the way to react. This at the par four seven. That's what she needed, getting one into the red. I mean, there's some damage to that scorecard, but there's plenty of holes to make it up on. Well, also birding that sixth hole was Anne Charlotte Mora. So a big group at 10 under par, but the French player who led after days 162 is back in front. She dropped a shot at four, but back-to-back -back birdies has her at 11 under par. And the player to catch right now at the top. Stabner two over for the day in a bunch of three players there at 10 under par. Two Germans alongside uh, Stabner now in Sophie Witt, who's uh, part every hole except the par five third hole. Chloe Williams got it to 10 under par, just dropped a shot at eight. And look at Laura Funstuck, two holes left to play. She's got herself to minus eight, three back right now. So many players still in the hunt, Sophie. That's the, the story here. It is, and it's because our leader had that two shot lead and she's dropped a couple. So it's brought all of those six, five under par players that had gone through two holes back into it. This is a birdie putt for Stavner on the par three eighth. Sliding nervously by, you can hear the clicking of the fingers. Yeah, oh, thank you. Chloe Williams just off the back of that drop shot at eight, now at nine. Slow put up the hill from left to right. So here she is, Anne Charlotte Moore, getting those uh, day 162 vibes back. Can she make another? Downhill from left to right for a two after a wonderful tee shot. It's looking good. Hit a pace. And I think it's her iron game that has shone for me this week. The first day, I mean, she was hitting everything inside that five feet range. We saw her do it on the seventh in the highlight show. And you can do that around this golf course. The greens are very soft. Yeah, another player who uh, looked very sharp with her eye and Sophie Vip, but she hated that part.
This is where she made her Ladies European Tour debut a couple of years ago as a, an amateur. Another one of those little testers that have uh, been a feature of Madeleine Stavner and the opening stages of this third and final round. You know, it might help her giving away the lead early on and going into the chasing format. Sometimes with that lead, you want to hold on to it, whereas now she has to push. And whatever happens, she'll learn a lot about herself today. Well, there's certainly a few Germans up there. Laura Funchstuck going well. We've got two Germans tied for second. We just saw Sophie Witt's uh, birdie attempt at nine. And Lexi, as she's named, first innings hit a beauty in here. Certainly has. I mean, a kick in to get to minus 11 and tied for the lead. Well, that's uh, beautifully done into a share of the lead for Alexander Fershling, known as Lexi, though, Sophie. Yeah, when she went to Arizona State University, there was already a lot of Aless Alessandras or Alexes, so they decided to, to name her Lexi. No one in Germany calls her that. Well, this is how she uh, had just a tap in for her birdie. Beautiful tee shot at this par three eight, playing 172 yards today. And a five iron straight at it. Diksha Daggers just birdied the 10th hole. So she's got herself to seven under par. This 11th hole plays downhill, back right pin. Well, that threatened the uh, the goal bar. 200 gram goal bar for a hole in one. But it should be a birdie, which will take her to eight under par. Don't rule out Dagger in a second win of the season. I mean, it's so tightly bunched, isn't it? 11 players now separated by three shots. There's 10 of them, includes Lauren Walsh, who's playing her first start as a professional on the Ladies European Tour. A standout player in uh, amateur golf, just turned pro. It's going to be an exciting back nine. Par four, ninth to come for first Aline. Just a fair way, Wood, here to lay up short of the water that cuts across it. You want to hit it no more than 225 yards. For a number of players in contention, it's uh, maybe a recent experience. Not so for Diksha Dagger, who does make her two at 11, lurking. Coming off the back of a hat trick of threes. This will just be a three-wood as well for Anne Charlotte Mora. Very wide fairway this ninth hole. So how would you sum up this golf course? It's a golf course which, in the women's game, they hit driver everywhere. You know, they're so accurate that they'll take driver on. Whereas at this golf course, because there's lots of dog legs, and as I mentioned here on nine, there's water that sits across. You have to vary it up. You have to hit some hybrids, some three woods. So it doesn't suit a specific style of golf other than a person that's very good with their irons. It brings the longer and the shorter hitter closer together. The soft conditions. It's just a golf course that if you're playing well, you can only see birdies. But if you hit the odd one offline, then it starts to get claustrophobic. Certainly on going into this back nine, the ninth is a wide fairway, but then you start getting all these blind tee shots and 
if you're not hitting it great off the tee, then you start second guessing. And I never like to see my ball not be able to land. When it's tied to the top, we have a German rookie and a French player. Lexi Firsterling and Charlotte Mora tied at the top, 11 under par. Final round of this uh, VP Bank Swiss Ladies Open. Sana Newtonen has uh, crept back up the leaderboard. One bogey, one birdie after back-to-back -back 67s. Nastasia Nadeau, as she was after round one, seven under par. Sarah Schelke, who's had uh, two terrific weeks coming into this one. The Swede top five finishes, the uh, last two events on the Ladies' European Tour, just outside the top ten right now. It's going to be such a thrilling final day isn't it here in switzerland and this time next week we're in southern spain it's going to be pretty good there too It's almost time, isn't it, for the Solheim Cup Team Europe, led by Suzanne Pedersen against Team USA, captained by Stacey Lewis. But before that, we have uh, the last Ladies European Tour event before heading over to Spain. And you wouldn't want to call a winner right now, or, or a winning score for that matter. No, you, you, you really can't. And we know the back nine, there's, there's birdies to be had, but you just had to see the, the finish by Sarah Schelke yesterday. And you can easily throw some doubles in there. Back left flag here for first lane. Plays half a club up the hill. It's sat on that second tier here. So needs to carry it back there and try not to spin it down to the front edge. Beautiful seven iron in there. We saw it a good one on eight there on nine. Second shot for Dixie Dagger into the twelfth hole. Just half a club short there. Well, one co leaders uh, knocked it in pretty close. Charlotte Mora with an opportunity to respond. Playing around 140 with that upslope. Asking for it to go. Let's listen. So she's found the right portion. She's found that top level. Running out of holes, Laura Funchstuck's been an excellent final round. Six under for the day. Yeah. 
basically got a birdie the last two and then just sit and wait. You never know, might have a Sonobu situation like a couple of weeks ago in Ireland. Short iron here for Stavner. And more problems for the Norwegian. This is a goal swing that's changed dramatically over the last year. Sander Newton and back left pin on 10. Not simpler now. Well, she might be off the green, but the way Dixia Dagger putts always seems to be in danger. Playing with Megan McLaren and Maria Hernandez. McLaren's one of those in the mix, eight under par. She went out in 33 despite a, a double bogey. Sounded heavy. Low point there on the tenth, and Chloe Williams caught that one a touch fat. Par seventy-one here, out in thirty-five, back in thirty-six, one over for the front nine, Nastasia Nadeau. So one over for the round. Just 18 years of age, one of the uh, rookies on tour. We had a rookie winner last week on tour, Trisha Chinglab. Got it back there. Impressive stuff by Sophie Vitt on the 10th. A treacherous green, that one. Here's the defending champion, Liz Young. Three over par for her round, unfortunately. Well, I think to just improve. Just gone bogey, bogey, birdie. Putting in a few swing changes at, at impact, especially. So I think this tournament, with its ups and downs, is more of trying to bed that impact position in going into the rest of the year. She said, there's certainly some signs, but every now and again, I go back to my the bad habit as such. That did not catch many grooves. Well, you just hoped that birdie she got at seven had settled her down, but not to be the case. Must make you feel for Laura Funstick. It's slow. Make sure you get it there. Lost in the playoff at La Sea Open, won by Nuria Iturios a month ago. But it's, uh, it's turning into a good season for her. Disappointing to make those six pars the last six holes, but given her injury woes, more encouragement. And it certainly was out for well over a season, Laura, and came back and struggled. Speaking of struggles, Stavner, this is for a fall, a fall shot back up the hill, chipping. And that left for bogey. It's uh, a really tough period, this, for Stavon. And, and trying to put her round here in context, she's 22. She first came on tour when she was 16, only had one top 10 on tour before. So this really is uncharted territory for her. That's well judged, isn't it? Through the fringe and never quite short. I think four is absolutely fine on this tenth hole. It's playing the in the top five difficulty and the holes on the golf course. You kind of tick this one off and move on. So this for a fourth three in a row. Never 
on the right line. That pretty straight. Out with 34. So still tied for the lead. And we talk about experience. She's got that. I've, I've won before. She won in Finland and the way she won, four under for the last five holes. She has kind of positive, the positive movie going through her mind. She's been there. She's felt the uncomfortableness of being in that lead. And if you're looking for a course specialist, I know it's only a second season playing here. Lexi Firsterling got an invite here last year. She just turned pro. She finished fourth. This for the outright lead. There's nothing in it. A little tentative. And yeah, we're not at that point where someone needs to just go and grab it. Like, going into the back nine, it's more getting into position. Then with those last seven, somebody has to put the foot down. Well, this to join the leaders at 11 under. She's getting frustrated with her putter. She keeps giving herself birdie opportunity after birdie opportunity. I know you can't hold them all, but... Sophie Vitt feels like she hasn't hold her fair share. Well, the, the Germans have got their physio with them and one of their national coaches out here this week, and, and they're all doing quite well. Big part for Stavner. Yeah. Well, it is another drop shot. 39 holes she went without a, a bogey, and now she's made four in the last seven. spoke about this yesterday, how she hasn't had that adversity in the golf tournament. This is it right now for Stavner. A very slow birdie put for Sanna Newton and here on the 10th. Well, I mentioned Megan McLaren playing with Dick Shadaga. Here she is at 12. Those are the putts that are going to have to go when you're at minus eight. You can see the uh, driving range there in that corner of the screen. We're popping off to uh, 11, downhill par three. Nothing wrong with the iron play by Sophie Vitt. Michael Tervor was the guy that was on the range. He was working with Sophie, then moving along to, to Lexi. And, and she said, it's so good to have him here. Just that little bit of support. You know, quite often it's just you and your caddy, but it felt like they're back in Team Germany in the amateur days. In between clubs here for Chloe Williams. Big six or a, I mean, small six or a big seven. that you've got to pitch it kind of pin eye and catch all of it. Well, we've seen a 62 here this week already. Not seen a hole in one, though. Side a touch. And 
just the, the lack of movement. She used to be really quite handsy and the, the club would be pointing across the line at the top. It's really well done by Newton and to get that back on plane. It was a par five last year, this hole. They made it a par four. Full hybrid for first Lint. Cut across the corner, you can't see it land. Twenty under par for her five and a half rounds around the Zagazay uh, course. It's a pretty good standard. You're looking to hit this around at 180 yards from the tee box. He plays 14 yards down the hill. It was a good par five, wasn't it? Uh, uh, uh. What, 480 yards, 470 yards, what do you make of it as a par four? I like it more as a as a par five, um, where you, you're hitting now, it's a similar spot where you'd be if you'd have taken it on with a driver. So now it, it's five iron, five iron, or hybrid seven iron. It does speed up play though, heading into the back nine, which is why the move was taken. And the green, I mean, there's some slope on that green from left to right. Same play here for Stabner. You've got to kind of go 45 degree angle straight over the tree, so you need height early. We've got to build again. Two back now. Yeah. It was a birdie chance moving into the back nine. And, and now you think, well, par's good. So it, it slows down the scoring heading into the back nine rather than speeds it up. It makes you kind of be happy with level par going to, to 15T, whereas before you try and be under. over at the uh, 11th green and another lengthy putt like the last green in terms of length at least for Chloe Williams. I think she went with the six iron and just maybe under hit it a, a touch. This is where rounds can get going though for one of these drops. It's been an amazing month really for her outside the top 100 on the race to Costa del Sol and, and kind of said to herself, well, I think I'm going back to Q school. And that acceptance freed up her game. She was playing amazingly, like Chiefs aren't playing brilliantly going into the Scottish Open, missed the cut. And then that was the moment where she thought, right, come on, just go for more shots, play more positive golf. She qualified for the Women's Open. She shot five under down at Hankley Common and since then has made some top tens and and been looking up the leaderboard rather than, you know, trying to make a cut. Yeah, she's gone from outside the top 100 to inside the top 50 on the Ladies' European Tour rankings. Straight away there, Newton, who uh, led by one going into the final round here four years ago when Chloe Williams' compatriot Amy Bolden was the champion. Finished third that year, did Newton. Putting for a three. This will swing from left to right. one of those length putts. I was just about to say, get the feeling that, that one of these needs to go just to keep it positive. TT Green, it's been flawless. She knows the line from Sana Newtonen's birdie attempt. 
Currently one under par, all pars, and then a birdie on the par five third. This to tie the lead for Sophie Vin. Slower than you think. about it puff of the cheeks it went it dropped and we have three players now at 11 under par sophie vitt joining Anne charlotte mora and her compatriot lexi first back left flag on the 10th mora trying to draw one in does it all kick from left to right as well. She's been so good with those irons. That's a tough flag to get to. You're trying to draw it from right to left, and then I mentioned how it all kicks from left to right. In the first two days, you know, shoot 64, 66, best two rounds on tour. Game suddenly feels easy, and then you can come out the next day and just can't find the groove you had. It's different on a Sunday. It's that pressure that we play for. That's, you know, it's where you want to be. And makes you feel so different over the golf ball and mind starts playing tricks and that's where you know, this is it's all about the, the head today see the flag to the left hand side of that tv tower you had to start it at the edge of that tv tower and try and work it in been dialed in with these irons so far and this looks to be on a very good line. Oh, it's superb. Everything just runs away from that flag. Well, two Germans amongst our three leaders, and it's another German who's been playing one of the rounds of the day. Laura Funstick, though, finding the bunker off the tee at 18. Front left flag, though. That is how you play it. Don't leave this one short, Laura. Plenty of Germans, plenty of French players uh, amongst our leaders because Annelise Cordau has got to five under for the day. This young one last year as a 39-year-old, well, Annelise Cordau, also 39 years of age, one behind the trio of leaders. now with Vit. <laughs> what all peaceful out on Lake Zook. Half an hour from uh, Zurich. Blind T-shirt on the 12th. Right half is preferable. Just about there. No matter where the flag is on this green, if you're down the right half, you can access it. So here's Funchluck. Just try and make one more birdie. Oh, 
Round six birdies in the opening 11 holes, none after for Fünstück. Incredibly slow, this birdie put on 10. Needs to hustle. All hard work, isn't it, for her so far today? Had a couple of Norwegian winners of the uh, VP Bank Swiss Ladies Open. Marion Skarpnord and a certain Suzanne Pettersson both won the trophy here. Did Anja Monkey win as well? She's Swiss, uh, Swiss Open, she's German, so trying to get some correlations, I suppose, okay. in there. This one moves a hell of a lot for Lexi Firstelin. She's right on this side slope. It's about a 4% pitch on the aim point measurement. So quite often you can hit it up and then it's not got the pace and it comes up short left. Really got to imagine the line here. and takes the lead at minus 12. Well, the way she's going, next year we might have a Lexi v Lexi battle in the Solheim Cup. She's the only one so far that we haven't seen, you know, miss hit a shot or miss hit. But it's so easy when you're in this pressure situation to, to not catch stuff well. And so far, she's the one that has had her eye in. And to answer your question, we have had a German winner of the uh, Swiss ladies. It wasn't Anja Munker, oh, though. Who was it? Bettina Howard. Oh, wow, yeah. She played Solheim. She won the year before, Suzanne Pedersen and Marianne Skarpnord, 2007. And the French winner back in 1997 was Marie-Laure Lorenzi. Beat Trish Johnson in the playoff. A little bit of Swiss ladies open history for you. You were probably commentating on all of them, were you? Now, now. OK, now one back. Knows the line. It's a difficult one to match pace and line. Second at 12 for uh, Sophie Witt. Been relentless with her iron striking today, Sophie Witt. Got it on a string, hasn't she? Yeah, at the moment, the way they're playing, first inning and Witt, two young Germans, could be a duel from them over the back nine. Stavner, solid, good. Still in there. But she'll just be hoping that that's my wobble out the way. Probably Sophie Vitt's another one that her and Firstling haven't had that yet. Sanna Newtonen's second into the 12th. Last uh, year, and Charlotte Moore for her breakthrough win on tour. <laughs> Nearly tied it up, but uh, now trailing. Take tee shot by Williams. Can she take advantage of it? That'll be speedy from above the hole there. 
Talk to try about trying to have a, a Charlie Hole like attitude. Just get up there, see it, hit it. Yeah, the ones that want that attitude are the ones that think about it too much. Funched up for a round of 65. Yes. And right now, that's going to be good enough for a top 10 finish. What a terrific final day that is. Another step in the right direction. Eight under par, not going to be good enough, but maybe good enough for a, a top 10 at least. The leader. Downhill par 3, 11th. That's right. Yesterday, she was uh, a little more nervous than normal after shooting that opening 62. The team markers are very similar to the, the trophy. They are, yeah. It's a very heavy trophy. So watch the person that tries to lift it above their head. No chance. 182, but playing 168 with the downslope. Long iron here for Mora. Good line. It's a good shot. Chance to get to that minus 12 number. She used the tee box there. She took the longer club. Thought, I don't want to be beyond this flag. So just teed it back a couple with that five iron. It's exactly the same club here for Stavner. She's working on the, the shoulders as they come through the ball. The right shoulder was getting high in previous weeks. She was hitting pulls. She's trying to work it underneath that chin now. Feeling a right shoulder low in the downswing and through impact. like the Stadner of the first two days. That was the last chance to strike gold and nearly got it. Santa Newton has missed her birdie attempt. Williams next to try and make a three here. Just a level par for Williams so far today. One birdie, one bogey. There's a lot of players in here looking for that breakthrough win. That first trophy on the Ladies European Tour. Not the Sophie Witt's been around a, a long time. This time two years ago she was still an amateur. Still only 20. Putting across the slope. It's a good inch or two from left to right, this, for Birdie, for Sophie. yesterday part of final eight hole saw her getting frustrated there yeah i she think i think she read that as more than it was and then couldn't convince herself to hit it on the line so she's not she's more frustrated at herself second guessing and you'll notice this on the final round there'll be a few second guesses 
Nastasia Nadeau. Five back now, the French teenager. Well, the hills of uh, Switzerland. Lexi first did it with a wonderful birdie at uh, 10. Has the edge right now, but so many contenders. asking uh, Maura to move her marker here. In the pace with that right arm there, it's just trying to feel how quick this will be. Down there, and it just didn't move at all. Oh no, uh, none of the ten Swiss players have uh, made a move towards the uh, the top of the leaderboard. Give Metro the best place at two under par. Dog leg from right to left this 13th, so if it's okay there. Well, I was wondering whether first thing would be putting for par before the other two putt for birdie, but Moore has just about edged it for her attempt at the two. So good with the tee shots from Stavner and Moore. And this is a chance. I think Moore is further. Uh, is closer, but I think she said, you want me to play, which she could get this to minus 12. And then Firstling stood over her par pot. You could see a two shot swing easily here. A lot of second guessing going on around this flag. Understandably, he stood there thinking it's right to left. And then we can see that it plays a a club and a half downhill, so you think, well, maybe it's going to come back left to right. You know, if in doubt, hit it straight. Excellent. Mora with her third birdie in six holes, gets into a share of the lead, although her co-leader, first inning, still with work to do to stay at minus 12. Back to 13th tee box, Williams. Wide fairway this 13th, just keep it down the right. Stuff that we didn't see earlier in the week, we had a deluge of rain on Wednesday night, softened up the golf course, and now these fairways are starting to firm. Well, she's been caught immediately at minus 12. For first starting to stay there, though. Yeah. It's a good two pot. Just considering a fifth year at school, that 
Arizona State University, then decided to turn pro the week of the Swiss Open, and that's where she got her first top 10. So a course which is fond memories for Firstelin, and will it be her first ever LET win? Stabner, who's had a tricky day, to say the least, so far. 12 unanswered birdies the first two rounds. Just the one birdie so far today to go with four bogeys. This to get back within two. She's fighting back. She has time on her side. When you've been out on tour since 16, you, you, we feel like we've seen the name Madeline Stadner for forever, but she still is only 22. Yeah, I mean, she has learnt on and off the golf course, hasn't she? She did finish school, but never went to school, played golf and was educated off the golf course. Birdie put there for Diksha Dagger. Yeah, Dad Narinda punching that one in as well. So she moves to nine under par, although she does only have four holes left to play but three under for the day now for the Indian who could go top of the race to Costa del Sol rankings with a win final round of the VP Bank Swiss Ladies Open Alexander Lexi Firsterling alongside Anne Charlotte Moore at the top another birdie for Mora's compatriot and Lise Cordell has come at the par three. 15th hole, the sixth birdie of the day. Alongside Vit now at 11 under par, we'll be catching up with Cordell in a moment. Stavna with that birdie in a fifth place alone. There's bunkers down the right here at 2.30 to carry them. It's gone down the side That's of it. Just gone, tied for the lead. You've got the honour off the tee and then you hit one like that. She's furious with herself. green side, that dark green side of the fairway. Flag today is in the middle. It's been quite a generous flag all week. Sure. Yeah, good. Well, look how much run we're getting out of it now. Uh, just sticking almost straight away on day one. And that's what a lot of sunshine will do. We have been baked here the last few days. The weather's been beautiful, really. Just a provisional for and Charlotte Moore. We didn't see where it finished. It seemed like it just landed just right at the bunker, though. Yeah, I think because it's an uphill tee shot, you can't see that. to the time she's not played the whole 
how you should the other two beautiful drives sophie had a look at this hole earlier this week The 12th hole is over 400 yards and it's not just about hitting the fairway, it's about hitting the right part of the fairway. Down this left side with a left flag, the tree blocks you out. If you find the rough, you're really blocked out. You have to edge your way down this right hand side, bringing that bunker there into play. It's 240 yards to carry it, but I like this right hand side here. Where this golf ball is, is perfect. It opens up the green to a right and left flag. And with the ball above your feet, you can draw it in and attack flags from any position. So right half is good here on 12, left is blocked out. Yeah, and the fairway, as you, you know, you're saying there, they are down that left side. Firstling and uh, Stavna, we'll see. New to them. Just seems to be stuck in neutral at the moment, Sana New to them. Just deal with hitting one stiff, couldn't she? And one bogey, one birdie on her card. It's amazing the pressure of a Sunday afternoon, how it puts the handbrake on players. <laughs> trying desperately to get out your own way. Well, she's a player that doesn't have playing rights, full playing rights on the Ladies European Tour. Lost her card after having a card on the LPGA Tour and focusing on that. Moving gently from left to right, up the slope here for Vip. Seems to have a birdie lock on every green. Cup and a half from left to right for a three. Another one that dead weighted itself into the hole. Willing it into the hole. Well, we've got another one at 12 under par. Make that a three way tie. Two Germans and a French player. Interesting, the two Germans both have their mums on the bag. We thought the first ball was was in play. I mean, it's a shocker of a light. Incredibly thick down there. Clover, that thick leaf grass as well. Have to heave ho this one. Play for some release as well. Still got the best part of 140 yards to the front edge. Flags on 11. well there. It would have been so easy to turn that one over. You see, the flag's been put in the middle of the green every day. They've been nice to these players this week. Another one right out for a first inning. Birdie put for Williams to get to 10 under par and under par for the round. Walks it in, good stuff. 
looking like she was getting a touch frustrated on the golf course, getting cross with herself. Not anymore. 119 yards for Stavner, pitching wedge into 12. Below the hole is good, leave yourself an uphill pot. It's not an easy read from there. Fourteen playing with Nadeau and Liz Young, the defended champion, is Lauren Walsh. Decent effort, first time playing a Ladies European Tour event as a pro. Yeah, she was a, a great golfer, went to Wake Forest, top ten amateur in the world. Curtis Cup player, you know, so much credentials, but you never know when you move up to the pro ranks what will happen. She needs top ten. That's her goal. If she gets top 10, Lauren Walsh, she gets into the next Ladies European Tour event, which is the French Open in a couple of weeks' time. Whereas Walsh hit driver and got it all the way down there at 290. Sophie Vitt has played for position with a hybrid down the left-hand side. Playing with Lauren Walsh, Anastasia Nadeau. Part of the uh, French team that won the uh, European Amateur Championship. Finished third at Q School as an amateur, then turned pro. So two new pros, if you like. Two players who only turned pro in 2023 in that group with the uh, rather more evergreen Liz Young. Fairway Wood here for Williams narrow corridor of a fairway to hit. Yeah. Sensible with the line, but aggressive with the swing. It's the formula for playing this golf course well. One back of the trio of leaders is Andy's called out. Par 5, 16th. right in her wheel part this spins it back it's just high of the hole so that'll be a quick birdie put to come but threatening six under par just birded 15 two par fives 16 and 17. in France. Back down the hill, a touch from right to left for a three for Walsh. Yeah, so she needs top 10. At the moment, she's tied for 11th place. So you feel she needs at least one more birdie coming in. We'll be uh, taking it up at Q School for the Ladies European Tour end of the year. Slope moving from left to right. Hello, back in business, two in a row for Stavner, who is definitely not out of this yet. Moves within one. Five players now separated just by a single shot. And deserves a lot of credit for getting back into it. Move from left to right on her. As it loses pace, it'll be dragged across the hole to that right hand side. Oh, well, what a performance! 
great start to the back nine for Lexi first inning. I think Simone missed the high five there, I didn't know. she? Come on, Mom. Keep up. Mum Simone has been a bit of a good luck charm for her on the bag, actually. Some of her best performances have been with Mum Caddy. A watch for a holding one here at the 15th. Three nice tee shots there. This is quick. This is a fiddly one. Back down the slope here on 16. First and then getting to 13 under par. Two holes left for uh, Andy Scordell. We spent uh, a little part of this summer caddying three weeks in a row. She caddied for Leanne Pace. Confidence is back. She'll sleep well tonight. Bit stressful time making three bogeys in a row with the lead. But two under par for this back nine and is a lot more comfortable chasing. But they're all trying to catch first a link. 391 yards, dog leg from right to left, bunkers down the left hand side. in left or it sneak past the bunker so a dog leg from right to left she'll actually have a lot less club in if she'd have played towards that dog leg played towards that corner and now she's down the fast track down that left hand side has been reminded about pace of play by a referee on the 12th tee box. Not what you want when you're in this final group, but has already made a couple of birdies here on 13. <laughs> Safely down the right-hand side. The round of the day so far has come from uh, Laura Funchter. She's at uh, eight under par. Megan McLaren's made a birdie at the par 315, so into a share of seven. But first of the, with those uh, three threes to start the back nine, has hit the front of this VP Bank Swiss Ladies Open. Third and final round. Just shot down this 14th. Beautiful views. Chloe Williams has only got eyes for the flag. That's left. Not be long. Oh, she was slightly worried about the penalty area to the left, but hey, 15 feet left of the flag. That's okay. Yeah, it's a big property. It is uh, Golf Park Holzhausen. This uh, VP Bank Swiss Ladies Open, the first tournament on the Ladies European Tour with a GEO certificate for its uh, environmental friendliness. There's the uh, driving range down there, your bottom of your screen, where uh, we've been told five million balls are hit from over a year. I believe it, 360 degree driving range. How's this one coming out of thick stuff for VIT? Of 
see the difference from the fairway, drop and stop from the rough. You've got to play for that release. Tester to come. The rolling hills and the mountains and the, the lake. You kind of expect it when you come to Switzerland if you watch the, uh, the men's DP World Tour event from Montana. He's there, very spectacular as well. And of course, the, the lake here, Lake Zug, does work its way up towards uh, Lake Geneva, which is uh, the backdrop for another event on the Ladies European Tour, the Evian Championship, one of the year's five majors. three-year-old from Germany, Lexi Firstling, who has the edge right now. A couple of shots back at the start of the day. Held a two-shot lead heading into the final round is Stavner and lost it quickly with those three bogeys on the front nine but has bounced back on the back nine a couple of birdies she is only two back flag today 21 on five from the right hand side not a breath of wind oh she's got her eye back in brilliant shot there well this is uh wonderful fight from the Norwegian and that's what she's become known for she birded the last three holes at Q school on the LET last year to get her tour card knowing that she had to do it when you've come through that that well do or die you know you don't get it what happens I'd be I'd be pulling on that when I needed it the most when there was no other way it was get a job or lose a job, I could do it. Yeah, because the pressure really doesn't get much more than being at qualifying school. Let's see if Mora can stick one in here close. Second to 13. Asking for it to go. It listened. Oh. Target golf. Surrounded. Winning scores uh, the last three years here between 12 and 17 under. Looks like we're heading for something similar. She might beat the ball to the hole here, Sophie Vitt. Was that just a missed strike? Is it? Yeah, it just I don't know. didn't sound right, did it? And mentioned it was a hard putt. I think she knew straight away she didn't start it high enough so she couldn't get that down slope to take it towards the pin. Yeah, nice crowds making their way. Uh, I mean, being what, half an hour or so from zero. I mean, it's such a busy place, this all round the year, never mind when the Ladies European Tour's in town. Three back, this is a must make for Williams. Such a good pace and such an important pot. Keeps her chances alive of one of her first LET event. Back to back birdies just in the nick of time for the Welsh player. Newton and similar line to Williams. 
you just look at the, the difference in the way both of them have struck puts on 13 and 14. Williams is thinking, well, just no regrets, I can go for it. But with Sandra Newton outside the top 80 on the race to Costa del Sol, maybe she's thinking, oh, good week's all right. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't throw it away, currently 84th in those rankings. And, and that's been Williams' mindset, hasn't it? She, you know, we mentioned the Charlie Hole like attitude, but it's be aggressive, just go for it. And it, it's it's coming up trumps. Look at her now in a share of fourth place. Look, the key to golf is to, to get out of your own way. All these players are brilliant at golf on the driving range, the no problem, and go out there, pro ams, and the first few rounds even. And then it's it's this Sunday now. This is you've played so well to get into this position. Don't get in your own way. Well, first thing was one of, albeit probably I think it was half a dozen players tied for the lead last week at the big green egg open at Hilversum in the Netherlands. So she's experienced this as recently as last week. Yeah, and lessons will have been learned. Where could have I have, have got better? What did I do wrong? And the good thing about golf, the next week you've got a chance to fix it. So this for a two shot lead. Back up the hill, needs hitting to hold its line. Just a par there for the leader. Yeah. Also hoping to come away with a par is the uh, other G German right up there, Witt. It's a good two-pot and it's a well-negotiated hole. This 14th always plays in the hardest hole category. touch from left to right and a chance to get back in the tie for the lead beautifully done from Mora didn't have a caddy the first couple of days but just uh, like a few of the players staying with the host family this week so she's got the uh, lady who is uh, the hostess if you like of uh, the place where she's staying caddying for her today well this for three birdies in a row for Madeline Stavner I mean very little in this other than back down the hill really is out in 38 you just wondered whether that was the bubble burst but she is right back in it and importantly moving in the right direction with those birdies to 15 playing 143 yards with the upslope Another one looking to make it three birdies in a row. Not sure they know which way to look first, the crowds at the moment. There's potential champions coming from everywhere. Believe it or not, there's a load of people here that are actually playing golf and not watching the ladies' European tour action. The uh, Golf Park Holt has has 36 holes. They reckon they have 120,000 rounds a year here. The most in Switzerland. 9-9 for Vip. Click come down the slope. It's trying. deep into the back nine, 14th. Maybe one of the toughest holes, Sophie can tell us more. The 14th hole. It should be Liz Young standing here telling you how to play it. Last year's champion birded this hole three days in a row. 
the hardest hole on the golf course. And from this spot, she hit a nine iron to a tight left flag and arguably won the tournament with that fabulous shot. Now, what makes this golf hole so hard is the fact that the fairway is only 25 yards wide with trouble down the right, trees down the left. If you miss the fairway, it costs you a shot. So there you have it. Find the fairway or speak to Liz Young and she'll tell you how to play this hole. Yeah, Liz Young came back and birdied it in the, uh, <laughs> the opening round this week as well. Not to be for Liz today, one over par for her final round. Oh, that's oh, got so lucky. Wow. There's a penalty area all the way down the right-hand side. It's hit the trees and kicked back in. Well, yeah, I mean, oh, that. She won't know, back on the tee, how fortunate she's been there, Stavner. And the trouble is, it dog legs right at that pinch from left to right. So you hit across this fairway, which makes it even narrower. Driver also for Mora. Down the left. Oh, it's a little firmer right now. She'll be hoping she's got a break as well. We couldn't quite see if that's come up short of the trees. No, the gap in the trees starts at 250 yards. I'm not sure she hits it that far, so right on the limit for Mora. Just backing up what you've been saying, aren't they, here? It's hard, that's all they need to know. Oh, and it's, it's blind as well. Blind tee show, you've got to aim at the TV tower. But Forsterlin is a, is a straight hitter. Accurate golfer needs that right now. Three under for the back nine. Big tee shot coming up. That's left. It's uh, in more territory. Hard in mouth moment. The first inning. There was someone down there. Let's see whether the marker down there is going to tell her what what's going on. Unfortunately, we can't help her out. It will, down the right is a penalty area, but down the left is just trees. So you're going to have to find it in order to take drops. The green flag is up. It's been found. They, they may be short of the trees, both Mora and and first. Absolutely, it does kind of. The more, the longer you are off that hole, it does get wider. New challenge, mm. due one. Doesn't need to worry about the pace on this. This is downhill from left to right. No, not even threatening. As you say, he doesn't even need to worry about the pace, but still didn't get it there. She was the nearly player of 2021 when we, uh, you know, Solheim Cup was coming up. She missed out by one place. There was a bonus pull for the Ladies European Tour top three on the race to Costa del Sol. She missed out on that by one place. She even tried on the Solheim Cup uniform. You know, they got everyone in case, you, you know, you get named in the team so it's all ready to go out on social media, everything like that. And it was one of those, wasn't it? It was like Norquist needed to win. And she did. And she did. And Nana Madsen needed open, a yeah. second and at the women's did. own, and she did. And it yeah. was just knocked her out. And she played well at that women's open at Carnoustie as well. She, she was only a couple shots off the lead going into the final round. Oh, with Firstling in trouble, and Mora. You're only one back now, this for Birdie to get to minus 13. Maybe you can hit it a bit harder. Keep it down the left side. She birded the par 3 11th. Can she do the same on 15? She's been dribbling them in. They've been dead weight. That needed a couple more rolls.
Chloe Williams hasn't been hitting anything dead weight. She's been rattling it at the golf hole. Especially on this back nine, on the back of two birdies in a row. Said this morning, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. It's a lot more chilled about a game of golf in the last few weeks. Chewing the gum as well, giving that chilled look even more. He's trying to find something in this potentially. A touch of left to right. And that ball marker must have been pretty close to her line then. That's disappointing. Just made two birdies. It's a lovely shot in there. And this is where first things finish. She's just she's just coming out sideways. It's got 125 yards to the front edge, but a big tree in a way, so chipping out. We'll have a 9-iron left in. And you know, that's almost how unlucky she was. We just saw the Liz Young shot from last year. That's a couple of yards further back and she's got a full swing at it. Well, Sana not put off by the cheering there. She likes going on 17 green, was she it? She'd like to hear a few rules. Maybe Kim Metro's over there or someone like that. Has actually finished, so it wouldn't have been hurt. Well, what a break for Stavna off the tee. Now looking to make the most of that. Can cut on the left hand side. She has made the most of it. That's a good lead below the hold on 14. I wonder if she knows. I mean, because it did make a bit of a clatter, she, whether she knew it hit the trees. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's kicked in a good 15 yards. You'd hear it as well. More also. The, the trouble is, even if there is a direct route, there's, a, there's water that runs across at 50 yards. It's just a small burn, but you wouldn't be able to jump it, I don't think. That branch is right where she wants to stand. She can go more forward, but I can see her hitting it more towards that 65 mark, the yellow circle. Get out. That is not hard enough, is it? Just. Yeah, she said, get out. She said that in English, didn't she? Yeah, she's very French, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do like it when they give us it in English. Yeah. It's almost like they know they're going to the world. <laughs> Talking of French players. Cordell needs to finish birdie, birdie. And an opportunity upcoming at 17. Third shot for Lexi. Try and leave it below the hole here. Smooth a wedge in. Oh. Hasn't made a bogey all day. Just about to say the same, so great minds and all that. And she'll have that left to avoid the first drop shot of the day. Left with a similar equation here, also playing her third. Try and get it inside Stavner. Pitch it beyond. Try and spin it back. Link this one to the right. That's okay though. She'd like it below the hole, she'd like the uphill put.
bound to be some tension, some nerves, some mistakes. You need a bit of luck. Stavon has just got a bit of that. Now, we haven't seen Maria Hernandez uh, today, or Nuria Torrios for that matter. Here is the lady from Mallorca. Yeah, and the roar, the fist pump. Look at this. Nuria Torrios turning it on for the fans. Yeah, that was for Eagle. She's just gone birdie, birdie, Eagle. The winner of La Sea Open has got herself to nine under par. What a run. It's come, uh, it's a case of too little, too late, really, as far as winning's concerned, but she knows how to enjoy herself, doesn't she? Well, there we have first inning Amora tied at the top. Both of them, though, with a lot of work to save par at 14. Stavener, well, she'll have a chance coming up for four birdies in a row. Shadaga still at nine under par, only a par for her at 16. Six under par at the moment, good enough for a share of 10th place. Sorry, eight under par, I should say. Good enough for a share of 10th place. Nadeau and Newton and also on that mark. Turios leaping up the leaderboard, four shots in the last three holes he's picked up. Four time winner on tour. So some big putts coming up here on the 14th. Two for par, one for birdie. First thing to go first for her four. Save. She does remain bogey free. And you wonder if that's the putt that we'll be talking about. It's not the birdie putts, it's the par putt that keeps the momentum there. Mr. Putt from this length on 16 to get to 12 under. It was from left to right. That's two in a row for Cordell, running out of golf holes. To match first stilling with a great save for par. How about that? Massive par puts on 14. Well, that's brilliant from the two leaders. But they may be joined in a moment by Stavner because she could make it three at 13 under. Does the hole get smaller after those last two? They take the golf balls out of the hole, you know, Richard. There's still room. Yeah, I know. I think it just shows her that they're not coming back. You might go, oh, they're going to come back. No, they're not. You've got to keep pushing. You're moving in that right direction now. You're three birdies in a row. You're on that birdie train. Make sure you get this one to the hole. It can be quite slow from right to left. This would take your under par for the day. Good pace. That was a good effort, that. Well, somehow they all walk away with fours. this time for the Norwegian. Four players now separated by one shot. Here's another of them, Sophie Vip. Just a lay up to the top of the slope here.
none of the uh, Solheim Cup players, Sophie, playing this week. I see Bob McIntyre is going to play the French Open, one of the Ryder Cup players the week before. It kind of, I suppose it is a, the week where you want to conserve a bit of energy, really. Yeah, I mean, I think so. It's, I know it's only three rounds next week, but it's the very stressful and like high energy. I think Chloe Williams is going for this. Got metal wood in hand. 220 to the front edge. Blind second, keep it down the right half. Certainly can get to this green. Oh, it's come off low. Just keep running, just keep running. Come on, Forrest. <laughs> Take that all day long. You're going to top it, top it straight. Just a shame it was on camera, really. No, no, you take them all. Just trying to hit a low one in there. Should go and roll the eagle putt in next. <laughs> After 15, Mora. Turned it over, added a good few yards onto it. Be eight iron for Stabner here. Can't see the bottom of the hole. Plays half a club uphill, front right flag. Well, we've not had a hold in one on the back nine. Last chance to win a prize. the slope I think it will do Caddy Alistair McDonald I think has been a significant part of this pair and you spoke about how Lexi's got her mum on the bag and Sophie Vitt if it starts going wrong and you're in an emotional relationship with someone that can be quite hard but Alistair's just would have kept firm with Stavner and Keeper on the straight and narrow front right flag today. It's not on that back plateau. Eight iron for first Lynn. Very nice. When, when it's going well and you've got boyfriends or mums or whatever on the bag, it, it's great. But when it, it's going badly, they're feeling it just as much as you. So the clear head of having a so-called professional caddy will certainly help there. Uh, back up to the 16th with Sophie Vitt. Green that slopes heavily from back to front. Needs to hold its lines down the left. Oh, she made some swing changes, Sophie Vitt, in the last year. Just has felt them bed in the last couple of months. And uh, this form, this race for the title has been coming for her. This is the 23rd event on the Ladies European Tour this season. Dagger's playing her 22nd event of the season. Riding a wave. Week off next week, though. Second into 18 for Cordell before we head to the French Open. I'm sure she'll be playing that one. And then she'll be in India soon as well for the uh, Indian Open comes up short. Pitch over the bunker here. Got about 15 yards to work with between bunker and flag. Well played.
two good birdie looks coming up for the other two players in this group. And she's got to deal with that step in the green. She has. I think she took one more club and tried to take something off it, fade it in and, and held on to the club face. So it made it go a lot further. Breaking downhill from left to right. The first two thirds are on the top level. The second third runs down towards the flag. In these situations, you're in the lead. You can easily miss striker put. Needs to keep this high and left. You could actually use the shadows of the pin of the flag in the distance to help her out here. not dead. She's hit it so close today that she hasn't had to put anywhere near that length. But it's a long part, but here's for Eagle. And that chaser, the worker. Oh. It may have been on its way. That left for another birdie. Fantastic finish, isn't it? You, you look at the players up there. And Chloe Williams, you've got to put in the mix. Stavner, Witt, Mora, Firsterling. One ladies European Tour title between them. Downhill from left to right. No one's hit it. Everyone's been scared of it. So I'm cup captains. Been a bit of a mentor, not just to Madeline, but to a few of the Norwegian players. They, they got to see Suzanne a couple of weeks ago at the uh, ISPS Handel World Invitational. So I'm cup duties there for Suzanne Pedersen, and Madeline has uh, been able to tap into her expertise over the years. Vit for birdie. Slow to start for Sophie Vitt, bit of an injury, There's swing issues, but you can see, I mean, every hole she's got a birdie chance within 15 feet, it seems. Nick Adira say there, come on. This one from left to right to take the lead. Don't sneak an early look. Keep that club face square down the left-hand side. The hole is getting smaller. Yeah, when I mentioned those five players, one win between them, it's not surprising, really. And, and it feels like it is between those five. I mean, I, I know Annelies Cordell is also in the top 16, but she's just got an outside chance of birdie at, at the final hole, whereas the others still have those par fives to complete. Back-to-back -back par fives at... 16 and 17. And this could be more a sticky patch. You know, hold a good par put on 14. Is going to need the same here on 15. Back up the hill. Ever so slightly from right to left, but you can keep it inside the cup. Lexi Firsterling is alone at the top of the leaderboard. Just the second bogey of the round for Mora. Well, 
one back, three to play. Oh, you suck the energy out of that one, three foot. So four players at the moment separated by a shot, but we know Chloe Williams has got a really good chance to, to join them. First big with Cordell. either of the par fives. Newtonen, due one. Just gets the under par. <laughs> minus one for the day, minus nine for the tournament. Dagger on 17. Hopefully to finish up with a part. Yeah. An excellent final round, 65. Playing with Nuria Turios, who had that fine finish as well, 67 for her. Cordal finishes at 11 under, Turios at 9 under. A birdie for Chloe Williams. She moves to minus 12, just one shot back. Been a brilliant four holes for Chloe Williams. Three birdies in it, two to play for her. A tee shot that needs to be kept down the left-hand side. There's water down the right. There's a gap in the trees in the distance. That's the line. Our leader is safely down the fairway. Won't be able to reach though. Back to Matt par fives. Obviously, we've just seen Chloe Williams get home in two, but for the majority of the players in the field, are these par fives reachable? No, it's, it's more kind of top 20% of, of hitters that can get there. The only thing is, it, it is drying out. So if Mora can hit one, like pull it left. You can hit a big, strong pull off this tee. You can get it down that fast track. That was like that's nearly the line. Mm, just it's got just caught up caught in the up, semi. Yeah. And you wouldn't put these three in that category no. that we were talking about. They're that more on the average to slightly less than average in distance. But it's an interesting course. I mean, you look at this hole here. It's not just about finding the fairway, it's about portions of the fairway. Yeah, this has got to say left, but it's dog leg from right to left. <laughs> Sit down. Oh, oh, no, Chloe. <laughs> just when you want it to land softly, it took a huge bounce. Dixie Dagger on the final hole of the day. Talking about keeping it down the left-hand side, you need to do it here as well. Well, she's going to close the gap on uh, Celine Boutier at the top of the Race to Costa del Sol rankings. So the run-out starts at 260 down the right-hand side. Wasn't a good strike by Vip. See, it gets spinny. So that's why it's got no release on it. So Williams could have got to this green. Now she's going to take a provisional. Five players separated by just a single shot. And the champion you feel is going to come from one of those five. Trouble, though, for Chloe Williams, just on the back of those three birdies in the last four holes. It's Lexi Alexandra Firstling, the German rookie, with the edge right now in Switzerland. Three off the tee, it's only a fairway wood. 
That's a professional. I still think driver was the play. 100%. Yeah. It's just, just opened the face up. Stappen has got it just down that left side. She was asked whether, you know, having been, you know, the one up there that's won once before when you look at that top five, whether that that helps at all. She, she said when she won, she was in a bubble. She didn't realise what she was doing. And naturally, she'd love to get back into that state. Knows that's only an outside chance of happening, but she just wants to stay calm. She always looks calm. Yeah, I, I don't think one win's enough to think I'm experienced in it, because you can get that win in many ways. So over 200, uh, 250 yards to the front edge. See how close you can get. Final hole of the week for Dick Shadaga. Trying to eke out one more birdie. And every chance she will. Heading for another top ten, the Indian, whose game just keeps getting better and better. And that's what these players are lacking, what Dick Shadagger has gained this year, being in the final three ball, being in contention multiple times before she actually got over the line. <coughs> Two, three, five to the front between the TV tower and the, the bush on the right hand side of the screen here. Try and catch the downslope, thread it through those two bunkers that guard this green. Have to take a chance. Bunker short right. Well, it's nice to see umbrellas up just to shade you from the uh, from the sunshine. Well, Stabna could get home here. Carries a couple of hybrids, of a three and a four. It's 231 yards to the front edge, so certainly can get home. She's actually going with the with the three wood, so she's trying to actually get it as far down there as possible on the fly rather than run it. So two, three, one front. It's down the left hand side, it's a straight bounce. Didn't quite catch it, similar to Chloe Williams. They look worse than they are because of the huge upslope that's in the middle of this 16th hole, but she'll be happy with the way it's finished. Oh, what an experience for Madeleine Stavner. First time ever leading going into the final round on the Ladies' European Tour. Saw it all slipping away. And then to bounce back the way she hears on this back nine. She, uh, uh, looks like she's taking a, a drop here, the fact that the, uh, the drive has been out. Would you concur with that? I think so. Yeah. We didn't get there quick enough, did we? But the driver got yeah. put in the bag, so she'll be taking two club lengths from where the golf ball was in that bush. Yeah. But she'll still have 
240 yards to the front from there. So ball in hand, dropping, penalty drop for Chloe Williams. Haven't found the, the bushes. Sophie Vitt is going to go, though. She's got 245 yards to the front of this green. Plays 10 downhill. Similar to 16 as well, it, it kicks downhill. She's interested. What a brilliant shot that is. How unlucky. She carried all of that down slope and pitched it short. No run at all. You have to move. Sinking feeling, isn't it, for Chloe Williams? She's got the power to get home in two. She's just made an excellent birdie. Three in the last four holes. The silverware glinting. But it's it's not over for her. Even you know with a drop here, somehow can escape with a par. Are they just trying to work out where to drop it? She's dropped it as close to that tee as possible to try and get some form of swing. More and out. That's 16. A 50 yard pitch. I like trying to turn the toe in here and just move it from right to left as it gets around the hole. Mm, it's all, it's all. Uh, father, uh, a teaching pro at Ile d'Or in Nantes. I'm sure uh, he's glued to the TV right now if he hasn't got golf lessons to be doing. Well, how's your bunker play? 30 yards. I think Stabner will be going first. He looks to be further away from the fairway. Laura just marking the golf ball. Easier shot this because she doesn't have the fringe to contend with. She can keep it down the green. Be more reliable with the landing point and release. Okay, no, 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 no. Sets up another birdie try. Well, she has got a ladies European tour trophy or beard as part of the uh, winning team Garcia at the Aramco Team Series in London last year. Doesn't really count. Well, it counts as a trophy, but it's not an individual one, is it? I think as players, that's what they think as well. It's not yeah. just you saying that. It's It's nice to have. It's better, nice there's to a have. financial reward. And it's nice to add to individual trophies. Yeah. This one is important about strikes. Quite often, you go, well, how far can my full lob wedge go out of a bunker? And I think for Forslin, it will be around that 30-yard mark, which is what she's got here. Wow. Maybe just took the 54 degree there and took the flight down, let it release. Well, at the start of the day, I, I, I did want to ask you who you think is going to win because it just seems so absurd, really, given how many players... And I still don't think I could really ask you that in a, in a fair way. Obviously, the number of players that could win maybe has been reduced. 
So taking the drop here, Williams, laying it up. Yeah, it's, it's far too too hard to call it. You see somebody like Williams that just looked in full flow there and then one shot, gone, drop. And it's, it's not a time of the round to be sucking in views like this, is it really? No, we can enjoy it. in air, I tell you. Yeah, we can enjoy it. And it, it's breathtaking, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. They won't be looking up. No. There will be no views looked at. Hyperventilating, maybe. Look at that. All, all these, I mean, Cordell's done for the day, so there's nothing she can do. And 11 under's not going to be good enough. It's not been good enough in our three previous visits to Golf Park Holthausen. Dick Shadagger for a birdie finish. Brilliant. Round of 67. It won't be quite enough to take her to second on the race to Costa del Sol, but that's a win and six top tens this season now for the Indian lefty. Back to the top of the leaderboard. Birdie put for Anne Charlotte Moore. A chance to get one in first over her playing partners. Ooh. Yeah, so a drop shot at 15. Doesn't make birdie at 16. So she stays one back. And those first things got a birdie look to come as well. Well, this would be an opportune moment for a two shot lead. For Alexandra Firsterling here. It's got a line from Mora that I think Anne Charlotte just turned that face in and got it a little bit close so it doesn't move as much to the left as you think. Oh. Fine margins and all that. I mean, that's in, isn't it? A couple of feet from the hole. She's walking that one in. She's thinking, well, it's got to go left. And now she might have company in a moment at the top of the leaderboard from Stavna. Well, we were saying she fell out the lead, but we'll come back to that. We'll go back to Chloe Williams. She's got wedge in hand. Fourth shot, needs to get up and down here. right yeah that's gone from bad to worse unfortunately for Williams at the worst of times so her chances are evaporating here at this par five whereas Stavna has this to get back to a share of the lead I was saying she fell out the lead and then she started to chase and things were freeing up she's had two opportunities now good ones to get back into a tie for the lead hasn't taken them that difference of when it's at the very top of that leaderboard when the trophy is in sight yeah this this these final groups there wasn't many birdies amongst them as we watch uh Newton and almost chipping in wasn't many birdies from them early on then they settled in and now the birdies are drying up a little bit as we get towards the finishing line. Yeah, it was like uphill, then downhill. Oh, it's going well. And now it's just that uphillness again. And it's who's just going to come out on top. Who is going to dig deep? Oh, she's missed it. Back to back bogeys. And Anne Charlotte Mora has maybe put a huge dent into her trophy aspirations here. And maybe it's going to be the mistake which costs somebody. Maybe Firstling or Vit aren't going to have to make birdies. People are going to drop off. That pressure that we see is really being turned on. And Anne Charlotte Moore has just made two bogeys, two three putts in a row. Falls to minus 11, two back, and 
you know, the same can be said for Chloe Williams. They're making the mistakes, you know, they're giving it to somebody rather than taking it. Sophie Vitt's got an eagle chip to come before Chloe Williams has a fifth shot. Or after, should I say. It's going to be Chloe Williams to hit the pitch shot first. Well, if she's going to walk off with a par here, Williams, this has to go in. This is the easiest hole on the golf course. You know, stood on that tee box thinking, I can birdie this, I can reach it in two. And now, not on the green for five. Talk about head spinning. Has to forget about the situation. Just play the golf shot. And has done that. You can clearly see she wanted to hold it. Yeah. Then her friends call her bulldog, don't they? Because she's so determined. <laughs> I just call her Chloe. Yeah. But you look at that. She knows. I mean, she's moments, you know, isn't it? Yeah. You want to be in these moments. You want to see if you're good enough. Back on the tee. Also down that right side where we saw Williams. That's in the thick stuff. Luckily, there's somebody walking. Well, he's struggling to see it as well, isn't he? Look, where did that go? That leaky right one. Your body just won't get through it. Because it looks a wide fairway back on the tee. First thing's played this pretty decently this week, birdie and an eagle. Chipped in here yesterday. It's kept a good rhythm all day. The tiger line around that bunker. She'll be able to get home in two. Eagle chip for Sophie Vip. This to take the lead. <laughs> it's good composure, you know, when stuff's going wrong around you. She's got a tap in to tie for the lead. a big birdie for Sophie Vitt and it's two Germans alongside one another at the top of 13 under. They've gone different routes, haven't they, to, to professional life. Lexi Alexandra first and going through Arizona, Arizona State, whereas uh, Sophie Vitt turning pro at 19. Yeah, she, she did her studies while playing golf, so the winter time for Sophie Vitt was when she did her, their business degrees and in the summer that's where she came out and played some golf. But two young Germans fighting it out here in Switzerland. Shame for Newton in there. That's another birdie put missed. That's been much of the story for her today. Still inside the top ten. Not many full field events left on the LET this year, France being one of them, and she sits outside the top 80 at present. A six for Williams. Needs a birdie on the last and some help from our leaders. Well, what a costly hole. That was for Chloe Williams. First drop shot of the day, and as you pointed out before, Sophie, at the easiest hole on the golf course. Well, 
That's the trophy up for grabs. The wooden cow. The, uh, be a few players kicking themselves more with those back-to-back -back bogeys. Williams with hers as well. It's two Germans at the top, Sophie Witt and Alexandra Furstenig. Only 65% of the field have hit this 18th fairway. A blind tee shot. Left half means you don't have to manoeuvre one around the tree. That is close to the trees. So see if she's got a swing or not it is down the left but it's in the thicker grass talking of thick grass they found the ball just got to chop it out here oh that's barely come out I mean, she had the knob wedge out. She wasn't being greedy. It's just incredibly thick down there. Three wood here for Williams. You have to aim it at the, the tree in that middle of the fairway and then just hit a slight draw off it. The fairway itself is 35 yards wide but actually you're aiming for about 15 yards of it down the left-hand side. And well, that's a great response to the tee shot at the last. Such a tough driving hole. Mora now with her second. It has to push. It's going with a fairway wood, seeing how close she can get to the green. Oh, there's a bounce. Keep coming. for Mora. Mount Rigi, the backdrop, the queen of the mountains as uh, it's dubbed. And it's three wood for Lexi. She can get home. Someone in the crowd just moving there at a an opportune moment as far as first settings concerned. So resetting here. It's amazing how you hear things in these kind of situations. Sure do. Three wood in hand, going for this 17th in two. She could probably carry it to the front edge. Just kind of came out of that touch, just added some loft and some rightness to the club face. 
just nestled down. She actually hit the seven wood. So it was certainly in range. Not easy from that side. Both players will have to manoeuvre it over the bunker short right. Whereas Moore is down that left side. Yeah, Stavner's there for three, though. Sophie Vitt here down the left side of uh, 18. Chloe Williams down the middle. That's been lift clean in place all week. Mentioned those soft conditions. We had a lot of rain overnight Tuesday, a little bit on Wednesday as well. I mean, nothing but really sunshine all the way since. I remember when she came seventh here. She hit a nine iron and absolutely munched it through the back. She was so pumped up. Got to be thinking, if in doubt, take one less. Has to make birdie. Get herself in at 12 under par. Playing with Sophie Vitt, who's at minus 30, may not still be enough, but got to give herself the opportunity. Ball above her feet, flag on the left. It's set up well for a draw into this front pin. up a birdie chance. Which I don't think she has got a swing, you know. Oh, to be a lefty. It looked like it was really sitting down the way she was looking at it there as well. I mean, it's not even half a swing, is it? Careful. Yeah, you don't want to knock anything off. I don't think she did. No, she didn't. And she's uh, got it into the first cut. Well, what did I say? Maybe people are going to give it away rather than take it. Well, for Chloe Williams, I mean, not that she's wishing any ill on her opponents, but her eyes have got a little wider with what's going on here for Sophie Vitt. And she knows that the players behind still have this 18th to come as well. Exactly. The only two players that haven't made a mistake today are the two Germans that tied at the top. Sam Newton and is inside the top 10. It's been a good week for her. She will give Chloe Williams a read for birdie. <laughs> That's what you're talking about, this angle here. No, it's not great. And the, it runs away as you carry that bunker because of the downslope from the bunker. Yeah. Just caught that slope I was talking about. And the only option is to go, go high here. <coughs> Top floor, lob shot. Third shot now into this par 4, 18 for Coley De Witt. Not had a bogey all day. Sophie Witt made a great save. 14 now, first inning. There's a putt to go to 14 under by one of the Germans. Well, 
given what's going on. You make her favourite right now. Mum Simona there, just <laughs> keeping herself to herself, trying to stay out of the way, as you would with your pride and joy, looking for her ladies' European Tour breakthrough. They've got a very close relationship, Lexi, and her mum and mum's very proud. She has, I suppose, won on the ladies' European Tour, what was a Q School medalist, equal first last year. Now, Maura, this is chip in just about to say, Maura can put the cat amongst the pigeons with this eagle chip. We saw Vit run it close. We know it moves a touch from left to right. And you're going to see somebody here with nothing to lose. She's just come off back-to-back -back bogeys. She's got to give this one a chance. It's certainly makeable. Bad bounce, wasn't it? Gives a hope. Will be the birdie after the back to back bogeys. Led the way on day one with a sparkling sixty two and Charlotte Moore. and 18. Huge putts coming up on both greens. First Stavner to get what would be once again a share of the lead. The player who led by two overnight. Make your pardon. This is for par, isn't it, for Stavner? Oh, it's a brilliant par as well. Trouble off the tee. Excellent up and down. Biggest putt of a career. It's for par. Back down the slope. Moving from left to right, it'll straighten up at the end. It did. So a bogey five for Sophie Vip. It's her first bogey since the opening hole of round two. What a time to make it as well. You never know. It may be enough to get herself in a playoff. We'll see 68 matching her opening round. The disappointment to make a bogey at the last finished at 12 under par, but Chloe Williams has a chance to join her in the clubhouse on that mark. Could be the winning putt right here on 17. Chance for birdie from right to left for Firstlin to get to 14 under par. Needs to turn. It has. It's a two shot lead for Alexandra Firstlin to take down 18. And those moments there, a minute between the bogey and that birdie. It's just flipped on his head this tournament. Birdie for Mora as well. But it's in the hands of Lexi Furstling here. will be getting in close for this Newton and put see what it does at the end it'll be Santa Newton and first top 10 of the year yeah, much needed given her position on the race to Costa del Sol rankings but Chloe Williams to join the clubhouse lead what a three, what a moment for Chloe Williams. It may not be enough, but that's a great response to the drop at the last. It's gutsy. 
That's what Chloe Williams is. And you just got to wait and see now. We've seen how hard the 18th can be with Sophie Vitt playing so well. And suddenly this tee shot, this is the one that everyone will be watching. Can Forselin find this left-hand side of the fairway? Just needs par to win. Oh, she loves it, and so she should. That is fantastic from Firstling. You could not have placed that any better. The slithering down the left-hand side that you need to find on 18. Well, 12 under leads in the clubhouse. She's playing with Stavner and Mora, who could make birdies themselves, get themselves to to 13 under. This is a better pin position, this front left one. Makes the hole easier rather than it being at the back, but you've got to find the left side of this fairway. That's the tree is in play. Yeah, I know. Mm. Oh, look at that one, scamper down, that's long. Sole points up for grabs as well for Stavner, 79th on the rankings. She could pretty much sew up her playing rights for 2024 with a solid par or better down the last hit. Well, it's all about Lexi Alexandra first It's in her hands, and she couldn't have hit a drive much better than the one she's just banged down at 18. A two shot lead to take down the final hole and she goes searching for a breakthrough victory on the ladies european tour here at the vp bank swiss ladies open off the back of the two par fives this 18th tricky hole sophie had a look at it early this week The 18th hole has become famous on the LET because of that tree. It always seems to be in your way. Anything down the right hand side of the fairway and you have to go over it. It seems to be getting bigger year on year. So players will be edging down the left and bringing the bunker and those bushes into play. Now, once again, it's just proven that it's not about hitting fairways here. It's about hitting right sides of the fairways or in this case, the left hand side of the 18th. Exactly where Alexi Firsterling has placed her ball. First time she's returned on the Ladies European Tour to a venue that she's played before. Got an invite here last year, just after she turned pro. And she was a new name to us then, Sophie, and she challenged for the title. She did, and I saw ASU on her bag and thought, oh, here we go again. If you think of the famous players from them in recent times, Lynn Grant, Anna Norquist, but from the men's side, John you've Rahm. got John Rahm as well. And he's, he was over at the university, spoke to the players, and just to be around that excellence. And the way she looks, she's a very classy golfer, isn't she? Mm. she I know, obviously, you know, she's not made a bogey today, but she has composed herself very well 
considering she's been a professional golfer for just a year. Mm. Yeah, an anniversary it could be to remember in terms of turning pro. Yeah, finished fourth in the end as that invite. She said she was actually in a, in a share of the lead on the back nine. Didn't know she was too scared then to look at the leaderboard. I wonder whether she's very aware of where she is right now because that seemed nerveless, that tee shot. Well, I remember listening to Smelia Sonabu and she was in the position in the Irish Open last year and she said, I wasn't ready. I am this year. And, and that experience of just being there, just feel what it's like and then learn from it. Everybody's got to lose a tournament before they win one. And what a moment as well, potentially for Mum Simona as well. This far from done though. No doubt who's in the box seat here. This not the place you want to be. Got to go for it though, haven't you? Yeah, she, she'd have loved to have been a two yards further left in the semi and then she could have really got the club underneath the ball. Got the best part of 130 yards here. Just needs height, lots of it. Just open up a nine iron and blast it as high as you can or try and just dig deep on a wedge here. It is doable because the flag is on the left-hand side. not hit anything. Oh, how about that for a golf shot? Oh, what an amazing effort from Madeline Stabner. Not just with that second, but the way she's played this back nine. Never been in this position before, but look at the smile on her face there, says it all. I've been impressed with the way she's finished this round. It's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. And this could finish the job here for Alexandra first, I think. In any other circumstance, this is a straightforward shot. No tree in the way, middle of the fairway. Front left flag for somebody that draws the golf ball. Got to keep it right at the flag. That's what she's done. So unless there is an eagle from Anne Charlotte Mora, she's looking good. Yeah, it looks like it'll be two putts from there to win the title for first inning. Smashed a drive, has only got 90 yards left in. 375 yard hole. Given where first things just put a second, it really is a case now of having to hole out here for Mora. Full lob wedge. Flag 12 on three from the left. Well, that uh, simplifies the equation. Two parts to win the title for Alexandra Firstling. Well, she looks relaxed and composed enough. That's why. Two parts for the win.
from Norway. Welcome, Madeleine Sandman. Well, it's been an entertaining afternoon. Uh, feeling like it's a uh, rookie time of the year. Trisha, Jean Glad winning in the Netherlands last week, and now it's Alexandra first filling here on the break. It's where Amy Bolden broke through. It's where Liz Young, at the age of 39 last year, got her maiden title. And it's been, it's been a day of watching to see which one of those players that aren't used to be in this position would come out on top. And the, the back nine has, has been one of those moments where it's, is this going to happen? Is this going to happen? But Lexi's the one that has been making pars and birdies, hasn't dropped a shot today. And the one at 14, you said at the time, you know, it's not all about the birdies, the pars as well. That one at 14, where she got up and down, what, from about 100 yards. I mean, that, that has proved to be key. Fortunately for Anne Charlotte Mora, her wobble came at 15 and 16. She made that good par like Lexi on 14 and then threw in two three puts at exactly the wrong time. But has this little move from right to left and then back from left to right. This will get her to minus 13. A little battle between her and Stavner for outright second. Currently four players tied for second at minus 12. on day one she just couldn't quite maintain that brilliance and Charlotte Moore has to settle for a round of 69 on a day that promised maybe a bit more for a third successive round of 66 for Alexandra Firstling. And this for victory at this VP Bank Swiss Ladies Open. To be factually correct, two putts for the title. I don't have to worry too much about the pace. It all does gather down to this hole, which is exactly what you need when you're just trying to lag it. And you can't feel your hands. You want to hit it because you know what the outcome could be in the next minute, but equally you have to put to bed any self-doubt. Just put a good strike on it and try and stay quiet over this putt. There was the second guess. She's going back in. She's not hitting it until she's ready. One good stroke. That's all that's required. to break through. First inning, formidable. The champion in Switzerland. 66, 66, 66. Golf of the highest order. And a wonderful moment for daughter and mum. She went out and won it. Birdie in the last two holes, dreamland. It's like, that's that moment, I can't believe what I've just done there. Bogey free. Clickety-click, 66. This is a big putt, mine. I think this 
gets her tour card. Yeah, this is for outright second for Madeline Stavner. So she's currently 79th on the race to Costa del Sol, and it's inside the top 60 is the place that gets you into everything the following year. That was a brilliant comeback on the back nine. In the end, uh, she settles for second place and her best ever finish on the Ladies' European Tour. But it's all about the champion, Alexandra Furstening. Really Eddie Harmon and many other German players like uh, <laughs> Sophie did on hand with their congratulations. Oh, I Could have been Sophie Bitt today as well. And by the way, just on what you were saying about Madeline Stadnart, her second place finish will take her into the top 40 on the race to Costa del Sol. Come here. Saying how the German team were out, coach and physio there. It's felt like the amateur days for them. There's Michael. Maybe that's the formula. Make yourself feel like you did when you was a kid. And it was all going well when you had the team of Germans around you rather than being out there alone in the pro ranks. Well, that signature required, one on the scorecard before uh, she can then get her hands on the trophy. Thank from the German national team there, Mike. I'm sure very proud, because there were a couple of Germans up there, weren't there? But in the end, it's Lexi, Alexandra Firstling. The route was 66, all three days, a two-shot victory in the end to claim the VP Bank Swiss Ladies Open. And a back nine of 32 for Madeline Stafner as well. In a way, you feel like another winner this week in Switzerland. Yeah, I would have felt like she'd have thrown it away, slept on the lead, two-shot lead, and then went out in three over par. But to come back in four under, I think we've seen a lot from Madeline Stafner. The, the fact that we saw her at Q School with those three birdies to, to gain her tour card. To turn pro at 16, it's, it's been a tough six years for her. And how about Chloe Williams making that birdie at the last? Uh, you know, the way 17 went, she, she'll feel so good about how the week's been now. There's no sour taste at the end. No, and also I think the fact that, that Lexi has gone birdie, birdie, she can look back on that and think, actually, what more could I have done? I'm just pleased that I finished with a clutch birdie. And it's about moments. She'll learn from the 17th tee shot, but also be proud of that bounce back keep saying it it's it's how you finish getting across that finish line and well alexandra forstelin she just bursts through it i'm just running you through the uh, the leaderboard there of uh, the players that made it through to the final day today but there's the top of the leaderboard megan mclaren matching Dixie Dagger with a round of 67 first top 10 of the year for Santa newton memorable finish as well for nura Iturios with those birdies and eagles uh, coming down the stretch. You know, we said she had two putts for the win, but it's always nice to do it in style. Yeah, at this point, I thought you've hit that quite hard. 
and then look at it. <laughs> there she knows. <laughs> so you dream about it the night before around the 66, birdie in the last two holes. It's a clink victory. That's how you do it. And that's how you celebrate. Well, there's something about this golf course at Golf Park Holtzhausen that suits the eye of uh, Alexandra Furstelik. 24 under par for her six rounds around here. <laughs> Buzz still uh, around here in Switzerland. Wonderful scenes with Alexandra first and it confirmed as the champion at this VP Bank Swiss Ladies Open. And next on the agenda for us all is a, a certain Solheim Cup. This time next week we may know who's going to win in southern Spain. next week would it be team europe or team usa we may not have it confirmed just yet but uh, we'll be close to knowing but this week in switzerland it's been about lexi Firstling, who started the day two shots off the lead behind madeline staffner at 10 under par seven straight pass to open the day and sometimes you need to hit one close to get that first birdie. And remember, Stavner had bogeyed four, five, and six. So Lexi birdied eight. She went out in one under par. Ten's not an easy hole. This was not an easy cut. And you need to make some footage if you're going to win. How about this curling from right to left? Never looked anywhere else. So that takes a two under for the day. Yeah, okay, walked off with a par three. At the 11th, on she went to 12. She hit the ball well off the tee. Can't remember uh, missing a fairway other than on that 14th. Knocked that one in close. Left herself an uphill left to right of the birdie. Yeah, made the birdie part as well. So that got her to 13 under par and. She was either at this stage leading on her own or in a share of the lead. And it looked like she might potentially slip out of that with a drop shot at 40. Made a great par there. And then this gave her a two-shot cushion down the last. And Sophie Vitt was making bogey on 18. Lexi was pouring that one in for birdie. So there was that two-shot swing, which gave her a buffer heading to the 18th hole. Ripped a driver down 18. Brilliant two-shot, wasn't it? The tee shot is the hardest shot of the day on 18. And this one for birdie, downhill, just coax it. You've got two putts, use them. Or not. The magical moments for Lexi Furstelink. Played Junior Ryder Cup back in 2014. I know we're thinking about next week's Solheim Cup, but you never know 20. 24, 10 years on from her Junior Ryder Cup appearance. You never know. Well, it's been a wonderful week in terms of weather, in terms of scoring, in terms of scenery and views. But the view doesn't get much better 
than the one that Alexandra Firstling has right now. Top of the leaderboard through the third and final round of this VP Bank Swiss Ladies Open. Let's hear from her. She's with Edgar Morse. Very, very many congratulations. You won it in Saal in the end, but tell me what your reactions are right now. I mean, I can't quite believe it. I don't know what to say, really. Um, it feels so, I don't know, strange in a little bit. Yeah, because, I mean, you obviously always work for it, and then when it happens, it's like you can't even believe it. So, yeah. It was so close out there all day. There were so many crucial moments we could pick up, but I guess one of them was a, a great pass save on, I think it was the 14th. Yeah, I hit it a, um, a little left and then I chipped out, um, hit it to, I think, like five meters and I hold the putt. And I think that was really an important moment. And I mean, we were battling all day. The two girls I was playing with, um, they played awesome. So, I mean, we barely made any mistakes and I think we all putted great. So, I mean, it was a great battle for sure. It certainly was a great battle, great to watch as well. It wasn't just your group in contention. There were people in contention all through the field. Were you aware with two, three holes to go, what position you were in and what you needed to do? Not at all. I didn't even know. I didn't even know after, I mean, after the guy on 18 announced it, after I held my putt, then I knew. But before, I didn't even know. I mean, I only knew um, what my group was at. And, um, but I mean, obviously, Everybody can can play a great round, and um, not only in our group. And so, but I was, ho I, I mean, obviously hoping for it, and and then it worked out. So yeah. Do you think that helped with the nerves? You not, you know, being aware of the position you you were in, it kept you calm coming down the stretch. Um, I mean, I honestly tried to not really look at it too much. I just tried to, you know, play my own game and just. I don't know, just try try my best and, and yeah, I, that's what I did today, so and it worked, yeah. And a word about your caddy this week. Is she going to get a cut in the end? I mean, probably, yeah. I mean, I'm probably going to take her out for a really nice dinner or do something nice for her. I mean, um, yeah, I, I owe everything for her, to her, so um, she's the biggest supporter I can have and it's just, it was awesome to have her on the back this week and just have her with me every single day, so... Does this win surpass your expectations, what you set yourself this season? Um, I mean, it was obviously my goal to win one time. And then, I mean, I was struggling here and there. And um, I mean, obviously, it's always the goal. You always want to win. But um, I think my, my goal for this week was to have a really good top 10 finish. And, and I mean, obviously, after two rounds, you know, being in contention, I was hoping for more. And uh, yeah. It worked out. Well, I know for a fact that you particularly wanted to get your hands on this trophy because it's one of the most distinctive ones on tour. Congratulations. Thank you Congratulations. so much. It's heavy. <laughs> yeah, it's the CEO nice. of VP Bank, Paul Arnie, handing over the, the heavy, the spectacular wooden cow to Alexandra Firstling. Her first trophy on the Ladies European Tour. And she's done it in under 20 events. She's only been a pro for a year, made her debut at the Swiss Open this time last year and is now lifting that trophy. Just to remind you of how the uh, Rolex World Rankings look, fifth world number one of the year, Ronin Yin, overtaking Lilia Vu. She and Nelly Corner will be in action uh, next week, as will Celine Boutier and Charlie Hull with two Europeans also inside that top 10. Charlie Hull in her highest ever world ranking position after a fifth runner-up of the season last week in Cincinnati. Won by Minji Lee, who's just above her on those rankings. Interesting. There, she, she had no idea, Lexi, that until the guy announced that you know she'd hold that part and she'd won. Pretty much. I find that a little strange. I do, especially by like, the way she celebrated. It was like, she, you know, she knew. But maybe. Many players do yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Until you feel comfortable up there. Well, she's got her hands on that wooden cow. And she won't forget Switzerland in the hurry. It's where she made her professional debut on the Ladies European Tour and finished fourth. And this time around in her rookie season 
on the Ladies European Tour. It's where she has broken through with her first victory. It's been a fantastic week. The sun has shone, the views have been spectacular, the scoring's been amazing as well. And next up for all of us is the Solheim Cup. We can't wait. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.